verses 5 and verse 11. Exodus chapter 12, verses 5 through 11.
wants us to participate. Yeah. He wants us to be a part of, of what he's going to do yeah. to break us free. Yeah. And ultimately, it's going to lead to a place where we will have the ability to give God the highest praise. Amen. 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 Today, we're, we're really going to focus on trusting God. Yeah. We're going to focus on trusting God. And there are some circumstances that have developed in our passage today that we really need to pay attention to because it gets dangerous. God's about to move and it gets dangerous and his people need to know what to do in order to, to make it out alive. So let's go back to Exodus chapter 11. Let's, let's go to chapter 11, verse 1, just one verse, and let's look at it together. The word of God says, and the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out of here all together. What has happened is that plagues have come on Egypt. God has brought the plague. Do you remember how God told told Moses to go talk to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Well, Pharaoh didn't listen. Well, Moses uh, went down by the river, and Pharaoh was riding on his boat or whatever, and he's, he says, Moses, uh, Moses says, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. And then he took the staff, put it in the water, and all the water turned to blood. The entire river. And all the other water around turned to blood. That was the first plague. That was a plague of blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then after the plague of blood, he went back and he said, let my people go. And then there was a second plague. And there was a plague of frogs. Frogs mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Getting into everything. I don't know about you, but you know, some of us, we can't even stand seeing one frog. But seeing them everywhere, yeah. all over the ground, there's just frogs yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And then after that, there was a plague of lice. Yeah. And, 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 and then there was a plague of flies. And then there was a plague of, on the livestock and all of, it was so amazing. All these plagues were happening to the people of Egypt, but they were not happening to the, to the children of Israel. Yeah. What I mean is, when the plague of livestock came, all of the Egyptian livestock died and all of the, all the Israelite livestock still lived. Yeah. There was a plague of boils where the Egyptians began to get boils all over themselves. There was a plague of hail where hail just came down from the sky. There was a plague of locusts, swarms of locusts that came in and ate up all the crops. And then there was a plague of darkness. And you know it's nobody but God when he has one side of town in complete darkness where they can barely even see their hand in front of them. But on the Israelite side of town, it was bright daytime. There was nobody but God. But after all of that, Pharaoh still with it as God's people go. Pharaoh won't budge. Have you ever been in trouble and it seems like your trouble just won't budge? Yeah. You know, you've been pushing and you've been pressing to try to get out of the trouble that you're in. You've been pushing and been pressing to try to create a better circumstance for yourself, but it seems like every time you take one step forward, you end up taking two steps back. And it seems like every time you get ahead, somebody's putting a stumbling block in your place. And it seems like every time you, you move forward, every step gets harder and harder, and the chains that bind you seem to get tighter, and you cannot break free. And you say to yourself, will I ever get over this circumstance in my life? Will I ever break this habit? Will I ever be free from this bondage? Will I ever get the promotion? Will I ever move forward in my career? Will I ever get out of school? Will I ever, ever, ever? Well, here's the truth, y'all. If you could have done it by yourself, it would already been done. God's got to become a part of this. And what you need to understand is that while you're doing your part, you have to trust God to do the God part. Amen. Remember last Sunday I told you, he, he went to Moses and he said, Moses, I have come down to deliver my people. Mm -hmm. And I'm sending you. Yeah. Which means Moses is going to go do Moses' part and God's in the background doing God's part. See, it wasn't because of Moses. Moses was not so great that Moses could cause a plague of blood. Yeah. That was the God part being done. Yeah. Moses just had to go tell. It wasn't Moses that was so great that caused the plague of locusts. That was God who called the locusts to come from the east and to fly over and eat up all the crops. It was God working all along. Tell your neighbor, God is moving. God. You can't always see him moving, but he's moving. You can't always 
see him working, but he's working. Amen. Even when we stand on Sunday morning, and it amazes me, it still amazes me, when we give a, a message, when we preach a sermon or teach a Bible study, that while we're just doing our part, the Holy Spirit is doing his part. Yeah. It's not, because, it's not because we are so knowledgeable or because we are so great at doing this that people come every Sunday or that people's lives are being changed. That's the God part. Yeah. I just have to do my part. Yeah. And you have to understand, while God is behind the scenes and he's moving, you still got to trust him. Yeah. You got to trust him with the part you can't see. You got to trust him with the part that's out of your control. Yeah. Because if it could all be in your control, then you would be God. Yeah. And that scares me. Because <laughs> I make enough bad decisions on my own for them to give me that much responsibility to make big bad decisions. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. But we have to know that God is moving in our circumstances. Though your, though your chains have not broken free yet, you heard me say yet. Though your chains haven't broken free yet, God is still moving. Amen? Amen. Amen. But not only is, is, is God moving, but we've got to trust God's movement. Mm -hmm. We've got to trust his movement. So let's go back over to chapter 12. Let's look at verses 6 and 7. We read them earlier. Scripture says, Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, talking about the Lamb, then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall uh, take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Yes. So what is happening here is the institution of what is known as the Passover. Yes. Okay? And it is called the Passover because of the tenth plague. I read all the other plagues to you, but God said, I'm bringing one more. Yeah. And this plague is a plague of death. Yeah. And God is going to, to, to execute or exact judgment on the firstborn of every household. Yes. And, and God is about to move in such a way, with such a broad brush, that it will encompass, it will, it will wrap up anybody who is in its path yeah. if they're not prepared. Mm -hmm. They will be swept away. Yeah. So what God decided to do is he told, he told his people, the children of Israel, this is what you do. You get a lamb without spot or blemish. Make sure you've got some people around. Y'all are going to eat this lamb later. But take some of the blood, <laughs> dip it in hyssop, and you're going to put the blood on the doorpost or right. the lintel of your house. Yeah. You're going to put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel so that the angel of death, the angel of the Lord, when he comes to take the firstborn, doesn't come into your house. Yeah. Doesn't take your firstborn. This is the plague of the firstborn. Mm -hmm. There is a place that all of us need to be when we're trying to get free. I know that we, we might be bad. I know that we might have some habits and some things that we do in our lives, some lifestyle issues that are not pleasing to God. Okay. I, I know this. But you had better make sure that all the rest of your life is in the house. All right. You need to make sure that everything, don't let it, just because I said it before, just because one part of your life is out of control doesn't mean that all of your life needs to be out of control. Get the rest of you and make sure it's right where God wants it to be in the house covered by the blood of Jesus. You need to make sure that you have the blood on the doorpost. You need to make sure that Jesus Christ is covering your life. And even that part that is not right, God's going to deal with it later. But right now, while you're trying to get free and God is exacting judgment, don't let yourself get judged. Don't let yourself get wrapped up in what's going on. You have to trust God because this is a dangerous circumstance. When God moves, he doesn't move in a small way. God moves in a major way. Because he is the creator of the universe and you don't want to be swept away. So you all know that for some reason, I'm still trying to figure this part out myself. For some reason, I like to go skiing. Okay? 
And and y'all seen pictures of me skiing on Facebook. And y'all like, you know, Reverend, I can't believe you actually went on that mountain and you went down that mountain. And um, first thing everybody asked me when I got back, did you break something? No, I didn't break something. But I almost broke something. Yeah. Okay? But I didn't break anything. Well, here's the thing. When you go to ski school, they really only teach you about two, two or three things. They teach you um, about the skis themselves because the skis are dangerous. They actually have metal on either side. So if your ski gets away or you get to going too fast and you hit somebody, you could cut a gash into them. Yeah. So they teach you about the skis. They teach you how to turn, you know, just so that you don't hit a tree or something, okay? <laughs> yeah. And they teach you how to stop. All right. That's it. Yeah. They don't teach you how to watch out for traffic behind you. They don't teach you to do anything but look in front of you because if you're going down the mountain, you're not going backwards. They just go reverse. You're going down the mountain. Yeah. They teach you to turn so you don't hit anybody, and they teach you how to stop so that you don't hit anybody or slow down so you don't get out of control. Yeah. So if you're skiing, imagine yourself, listen, I know you're saying you'll probably never go skiing, but listen, <laughs> imagine yourself skiing, All right. and imagine I'm behind you. <laughs> Now, you trying to ease down the mountain, and here I come, wide open, buddy, because I hauled it on you. I'm going to use brakes. I'm gone. I am the black avalanche. I'm coming after you. I'm easing down that mountain. Are you going to spend the whole time looking back at what I'm doing? You got to trust me. You got to trust that I can go left or go right. You got to trust that I can slow down. You got to trust that while I'm enjoying myself, that I'm also thinking about your safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When God gets ready mm -hmm. to move, yeah. Mm -hmm. when God yeah. gets ready to move, you will look around and there'll be folks all around you losing their job. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you can still be in the ark of safety if you trust them. Yeah. You'll look around and everybody else is failing the test. But you're passing, and, and you've got to trust God to stay in the ark of safety. You can look around and see other people's households falling apart. But if you will just stay in the will and the word of God and just trust Him, everything is going to be all right. God is going to move. Things are going to move. People are going to move. Don't think that all of a sudden because you need something from God that He's going to create something new. Sometimes God will move people out of the way just so that He can get you to where you need to be. And there are some folks that have done you wrong. And there are some folks that have hurt you. And there are some folks who have mistreated you. And when God moves on your behalf, just make sure you don't get caught up in it. Because I heard him say somewhere, touch back my anointing and do my promise no harm. I know a God who will see about you. I know a God who will show up on your behalf. And you've got to trust his move. Though you may not understand it. God, how come you couldn't just do something like, I don't know, Make a, make a wall so that the Egyptians couldn't get to us and then let us walk out. God is not doing that. God said, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm coming through in the middle of the night and anybody who's not ready is going to get swept up. Yeah. 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 When it doesn't make sense, can you still trust it? Yeah. Yeah. Or will you be the one, will you be the one that's, you know, well, I know what God said for me. You know, I'm still trying to work something out over here on the side. I know what God said, but I don't really believe it's going to happen that way. I, I, I you know, he, he seemed to be pressing on my heart that maybe he's about to open up a door for me, but I'm going to go over here and try to kick this other door open because that's the one I really want, not understanding that this is the one you need. And while you're over here kicking against this one, don't get swept up. Yeah. Trust him. Yeah. Trust his move. Yeah. Trust what he's about to do for you. Because it won't always happen the way you want to happen. Amen? Amen. All right. Last thing is, you got to get ready to move. You got to get ready to move. Scripture says in verses 8 and 9, we'll read a little bit more. It says, Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. 
Do not eat it raw or boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning. And what remains of it until morning shall burn with fire, and thus you shall eat it. With a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. You know, on, on first Sundays, on first Sundays, we have communion. And we, you know, some of y'all, I, I, I love the faces y'all make when y'all do communion. I don't it's y'all can't see you, but I see all of you. You open it up and we do the talk about, you know, this is the bread that's broken for you, and you start chewing on like bread plenty. <laughs> y'all show me bread. I mean, y'all have this look on your face. Yeah, see, somebody say, ass. You know why we have that nasty bread? It's unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's from Passover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the, the thing is, God is about to move, and God is about to move so fast, yeah. and God is about to do something so miraculous. I mean, I'm talking about like in that same night, in the exact same night when the firstborns died, Pharaoh said, get out. Yeah. Okay? God is about to move. And he said, you don't have time to wait on the yeast to rise in the bread. We don't, we, see, on, on first Sunday, we don't give you a slice of bread. We give you some unleavened bread. It has no yeast. It has no salt. If you go to your house, go to your house, your house, take some flour, put a little water with it, stir it up, and bake it. And see what you get. No salt. You're going to make that same nasty bread. But that bread is beautiful. I don't care what you say about it, what you think about the taste of it, that bread is beautiful. Because it is symbolic of something special that God was doing for his people in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it was a reminder that God brought them out of a great victory. In the New Testament, it's a reminder that Jesus gave his life for us. So that when you turn up your nose on Sunday morning, remember, it's all about this Passover. It's about the Passover. You see, God is about to move and he says, look, this is what you do. I want you to roast that lamb. I want you to roast that lamb now. Yeah. And I want you to go ahead. Don't, this is not a casual meal, all right? Now, this is not a casual meal. Yeah. You're going to take your, 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 your garments and you're going to put the belt around them. See, because when you're trying to run, your belt, your, your garment, your, your, your tunic and everything will get in the way. So take it and put your belt on. Wrap it up. Now, listen, while you're at it, put your staff in your hand. Because yeah. yeah. words going to come fast. I mean, I'm ready to walk now. I got my staff. I can go somewhere. Eat it with your belt on, and eat it with your staff in your hand, and eat it with your sandals on. I mean, you know how some of you do, you know, you get home, you kick off the shoes, and that's what they did. They would go home and kick off the shoes and wash their feet. He said, no, no, put your sandals on. Yeah, you need to be ready to go. Amen. You need to be ready to move when God says move. Yeah. You need to, what am I trying to say to you? Some of you are not ready for God to break you free. Some of you, you're not ready yet. You haven't positioned yourself yet to get free. Some of you are just sitting and wallowing in your disparity about how bad things are and saying, oh, woe is me. And you're not prepared. You don't have your shoes on. You don't have your belt on. You don't have your staff in your hand. What do you say? You better try to pray for God to give you a new job and your resume ain't ready yet. Get your resume ready. Huh? You're trying to wait for God to show up to help you graduate from school? Well, do your homework. You do your part. Get your stuff together, baby. Amen. You want God to give you some new clothes? You ain't cleaned out your closet yet. Get all that old stuff out of your closet and make some room. Have some empty hangers up in your closet and pray on it. 
know which blood I'm talking about. You know which shot glass I'm talking about. The one you keep in your refrigerator in the freezer so it'll always be cold and frosty. That one. Go ahead and start cleaning the house. Go ahead and start getting yourself ready. Go ahead and start making yourself ready for what God is going to do for you. Don't sit around and ask and wait for God to, to, to show up to heal you. He's going to heal you. But in the meantime, get the rest of you ready. Stop eating all that fried chicken and stop eating all that stuff that's making your blood pressure go up. Go ahead and start getting yourself prepared for God to heal you. Go ahead and get yourself prepared for God to move on your behalf. Somebody
You turned out all right. Well, mostly all right. <laughs> but what is it going to take for you to trust God to move in their lives and move on them to have and to break you free, watch this, break you free from the guilt and the shame of thinking that you're a bad parent? That you aren't good enough. To break your soul free, to break your heart free. What's it going to take? For you to trust God and say, you know what, God? Whatever happens, however it happens, I'm going to stay right where you want me to be. And I'm going to do all that I can, but there's just so much out here I can't handle. I'm going to let you do the God stuff. And I'll do my stuff. And both of us together, hopefully, prayerfully, faithfully, I believe you'll break me. Yes. I, I, I don't know who it is that needs to hear this this morning. But you don't have to stay bound in the pressure. You, you don't have to have so many sad days and so many lonely feelings, even when you're in a crowd full of people. You don't have to stay that way. You don't have to continue to suffer through the things that people have said about you. You don't have to be a, a self-fulfilling prophecy of all the things that people said that you could not be. Amen. And that you would never turn out to be. Because you serve a God who can do anything but fail. Yes. Yes. And you need to know that right now in heaven, in glory, God does not see you as a failure. God Amen. sees you as one of his favorites. God sees you as somebody that he loves completely and unconditionally. What is it going to take for you to break your own heart free so that you can love yourself? As I close, I want to tell you that I believe in my heart. <laughs> Amen. Give it praise. <laughs> She was singing earlier. I, I heard her sing. <laughs> I believe in my heart. Some of us at the end of this series are going to learn how to smile again. Oh, yeah. Some of you haven't smiled in so long. Oh, no, no, you grinned. <laughs> but you haven't smiled. As the one author said, you smile but it didn't, it didn't touch your eye. Yeah. It never got that high. Some of us are going to learn how to smile again. Because God's going to break his family. And some of us are not going to wait that long. Some of us are going to realize that when we ask, our, ask ourselves that question, Remember, you're going to ask yourself in the car, what is it going to take to trust God? Yes, yes. Some of you are going to get in the car, you're going to ask yourself that question, and you're going to have a revelation. And you know what the revelation is? You're all.